So you have investments are dotted around the world. How is it taxed in all of the countries that you invest in? Check out this video as we go through some of those details. Um, how are different financial assets taxed in the UK? Whew, that's a big question. Including equity, EFT bonds, EFTs, and closed end investment trusts, which can be REITs or infrastructure related, not the typical um, equity or bond funds. I'm particularly interested in how distributions are taxed as income, as dividends. And I, I, I've got some ideas around tax, but uh, Junji, from your perspective, uh, if we talk about financial instrument, I appreciate that you know you can't really talk about give a financial advice, nor can you really go on the periphery. But from your personal experience, have you have you done any investments overseas, which has changed because you move move from Germany to US to UK, etc.? Uh, thanks, Simon. No, it's a very interesting question. It looks like, um, uh, I think, was it uh, Jing, Jing Yao? Uh, made, you've definitely done your homework as well in this. So the answer is, can be as simple or as complicated as it can be. The simple, the simple explanation for how investments are taxed, if investments are taxed, is how you hold investments matter just as much as what the investment actually is. So in the UK, for example, uh, you know, there is something, there is a, a vehicle called an individual savings account. It's called NICER in short. And so you can, you can subscribe up to 20,000 pounds per year. And no matter, you know, you can invest in various different um, assets, including all the uh, different um, assets you have just listed in the question, the e different ETFs, equity-based or um, bond-based, and there's no taxes at all. There's no capital gains tax, there is no dividend tax, and there is no income tax. Um, if you don't hold an investment in a NISA, in a traditional sort of, uh, let's say, like a platform that's not inside NISA, then you'll have, you'll be exposed to capital gains tax if you decide to dispose of them. Uh, you'll be exposed potentially to dividend tax uh, if uh, it pays out a dividend. And as you might have mentioned, uh, for a bond ETF fund, which is mainly involved in you know, bonds and fixed income, uh, actually, uh, any income from that is not a dividend. It is still actually a savings income which is taxed at your marginal income tax rate. Um, and if, it, uh, if, uh, if Simon, again, you know, if you have any, anything to add on that, you know, that would be great. But kind of like that's the simple answer. And you know, it can get complex because there's more vehicles out there, how you can invest in. And it gets even more complicated when you're talking about internationally too. Um, but yeah, I hope, hope this was of help. Uh, but of course, if you have any other questions regarding tax-wise, please feel free to get in touch with Simon. Uh, or myself uh, to further clarify it. Thank you. Jinji, uh, that's a great answer. And I thought it was more appropriate that I would ask you that first because of your personal experience rather than a financial product provider. But from, and I had a couple of calls, it's not just related to Hong Kong versus UK, but we do an awful lot of stuff regards to US, Hong Kong, UK. Um, and a mix in between that Portugal uh, for some strange reason. Um, and, and one of the fascinating things I always see about uh, types of products is that their tax treatment in one country could be advantageous. Now, Ginger, you mentioned about ISA's uh, benefit from this tax-free income and capital gains tax-free. But if you are a, American, for instance, and I know that there's a lot of Chinese uh, from Hong Kong that are moving to the UK and then thinking about US as well. So it's really personal. I've seen a lot of that going on recently. Um, and you have to be very careful when it comes to tax planning because it could, you know, you don't suffer any Hong Kong tax. Let's be fair. Hong Kong uh, authority doesn't seem to want to tax you on anything, <laughs> quite honestly, uh, anything to do with foreign um, but uh, when it comes to the UK tax, yes, the nice is tax free. But if you go to America, it's it's then taxed um, uh, on full income. There's no tax free allowances whatsoever. And why should the IRS give any tax uh, alleviance on a UK investment? But then the same applies if you have a life insurance product uh, that's in, in in Hong Kong. Then it's not naturally going to be just taxed on capital gains tax. There may not be the same tax reliefs or some of the benefits you get from Hong Kong, because we might tax it differently in one particular product. So we looked at today with the clients, uh, they, their tax in Hong Kong would be CGT, which there's no tax, so that's benefit for them. But because we transition it differently into the UK, then it's income tax. And then all of a sudden it changes the dynamics of, well, 
okay, what do we do with this investment? Um, obviously, I can't give the specifics on this call, but on this session, um, but it did lead to a, a really interesting debate to say, well, you know, who holds that, that asset? Um, how do we, we bring the money in? Do we, do we be taxed on worldwide income? Because that's the other side of this is um, if you have investments in the UK, you've got to think about the tax burden there, but you might have investments in Hong Kong. And if you don't bring the money to the UK, then you may not get taxed on it at all if you use the right remittance basis on your tax return. So it's quite complex, as, as Chen Chi said. I, I've done this quite a lot of times, so I'm, I'm saying it as though it's second nature for, to me, but I appreciate how confusing it could be for you listening in. So I would always say to you, uh, look at the investments that you have and then think about the countries you're moving to. So typically we talk about Hong Kong moving to UK. Think about your products that you have in Hong Kong. Are you going to keep them there or are you going to transition that money into a UK investment? And I don't think it's always advantageous for you to do so, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, sorry, so I, I you know, promised a personal example. So, you know, I'll give you a personal example to everyone. Um, so for my personal circumstances, I, I've moved uh, to the UK uh, previously from the US. And so right now, and the US and the UK, some of the, the most safest and actually more regu most regulated places uh, to hold to invest your money, which I feel comfortable with. So roughly speaking, personally speaking, 50% of my uh, investments, for example, in the US, 50% of mine in the UK. Now, in terms of how I manage the tax, uh, luckily for, you know, I don't do any exotic things with my money. They're all invested in normal funds, some, you know, some companies. And the UK and the US have tax treaties that will prevent you from being double taxed on your on your on your investment. So it's quite simple, actually. I have my American investment. You know, when they make any money over there, right? They already pay internal taxes. I don't need to worry about it. When I dispose of them, if I make a dividend, if I gain a dividend from my American uh, holdings, I actually pay. I declare this in my UK uh, self-assessment under a section of foreign income. Now, one thing I do know, I'm not a US citizen, but you know, just aware if there are any US citizens potentially in this phone call, you know, be very, very careful investing in the UK. There's one specific law in the U US called the Foreign Passive Investment Vehicle Investment Company Law, uh, which basically dictates if you invest in a, in a UK based fund, you basically have very punitive tax charges by investing your money in a very simple thing. It's US being US. So, but yeah, please seek professional advice before you try to do anything. I've made a mis I've made mistakes before, but now I'm all happy because I've actually sought professional advice. <laughs> and just to finalize on that point, if you're sitting here thinking, oh crikey, I'm not moving to the US, but that sounds quite frightening, uh, then you rest assured the UK isn't as bad as the US from a tax perspective. Um, but it, and, and Hong Kong even more relaxed. So any investments that you make in the UK, would they be taxed in Hong Kong? No. Uh, so you just got to think about, well, if you're moving to the UK, just get your UK tax perspective sorted. And that way you only have to worry about one tax system. So it is a bit more simple if you're going from that approach from Hong Kong to the UK. Before we go any further, I want to explain that there are many live events that you can register for free. There are four events that's showing HK to UK to help people move from Hong Kong to the UK, the property expert panel. If you're a property investor and property developer, this will be very useful for you. Tax Q&A if you want to ask proactive tax questions in regards to structures and how to mitigate tax in the future. And finally, UK tax return Q&A, as it says, to deal with questions in relation to your tax returns before you submit it to HMRC. Don't forget that these events are live and will be shown on YouTube the day after. So why not register today, start saving tax tomorrow.